Let's get it rolling here, Jared. Uh, good to have you back. How was uh, how was golf last week? Uh, it was good. I'm playing again uh, Saturday, actually. Yeah. Okay. It's gonna, well, it's gonna I, be like it's gonna be like 70 here. So at least it wasn't on Thursday. Yes. Uh, yeah. Uh, so and by the way, uh, we will be talking golf on this channel with Jared in January. So every time we uh, do a show, a report, fantasy report. Uh, we get a couple weeks closer. <laughs> right, to, week nine to Honolulu yep. in uh, January. So, all right, let's talk fantasy football. Before we do that, well, as we do that, really, we have to talk about the trade deadline and the impact of the trade deadline. So, right off the bat, what was the biggest story, fantasy wise? I think a lot of it's more dynasty related. I don't know if there were any big movers for season. I don't think there were any big win. To me, the actually the biggest winner for like 2022 is probably Jeff Wilson, who was had no fantasy value left That's in true. San Francisco behind yeah. McCaffrey. Now, now he's a shot. Miami, now going to Miami, he's familiar with the offense. And yeah. He played, uh, you know, on, in this Mike McDaniel, Kyle Shanahan scheme. Um, and I don't think Miami wants to give Raheem Mostert as much work as he's been getting. I think that's just been a result of Chase Edmonds being so bad. So I think Wilson could work his way into, you know, a pretty significant role there. And Mostert has an injury history. Like, you know, he, he's, right. he's never stayed healthy. You don't want to wear him so, down. Yeah. So if Mostert goes down, then Wilson becomes someone you can start every week. And speaking of injuries, the Brees Hall injury, I know we didn't have an opportunity to talk about that. Uh, yeah. It, that that affects you a lot more this season, even though it can affect your dynasty. Uh, we hope not. You never know. I mean, just look at Barkley. You know, mm -hmm. it took Barkley a couple yeah. of years, not not one year, but because he really wasn't himself last year. Uh, now you could say, well, the team wasn't any good and the coaching wasn't. Any okay, that's fair, but realistically, it took him two years. And if that's the case with Brees Hall, then uh, that's a big blow to the Jets and obviously uh, anybody that has Brees Hall on their dynasty team. Yeah, barring a setback, he should be ready for a week one of next season. But I think it's probably going to be you know mid season before he's back to one hundred percent. So um, di dynasty is fine. I mean, he's he's so young. He yeah, that's yeah, awesome. Before the and injury. no history and with Brees, right? He doesn't have any no. college history. No, he was he was very dur durable yeah. in college, I believe, right? So yep. yeah, um, he'll, he'll be he'll be fine long term. Next year, you might have to you know have to break a bit on him. Yeah, and just imagine because if you had him on your team this year, it's like Jamar Chase, who I have on my <laughs> team. You have these guys, and they're just going. They're just starting, to, and you're going, yeah, this is going to be awesome. And then, especially right, my Chase, because you know I'm just sitting here on a Wednesday. Not doing anything, yeah. and I'm like uh, online, and I see Jamar. Ch no, it was the ticker. I read something on the ticker about Jamar Chase. Uh, out, out, you know, out. What? I'm, I'm, what? I mean, those are the worst injuries for a fan, yeah. for a fantasy owner, when you get them during the week when you had no idea that there was an injury. Yeah, well, Hall, Hall killed me personally because two of my best teams, and one of them is my big money team, had. Brees Hall on them, oh. you know, as my RB two, as like a fifth round pick. He he was set up to potentially be like the fantasy football MVP, just considering you could get him in round four or five, and he was going to be a top ten running back. Um, so that that was a that was a killer for me. And that was on your top money league. Yeah, I had him on my on my big money league. Yep. Uh, were we able to do anything to compensate? So I I've been mixing and matching the past. Like I started Latavius Murray. Uh, <laughs> last week with you, he came through for me. I'm getting uh, Cordero Patterson back off IR. Hopefully this week, so I'm hoping he can kind of save that RB two spot. Okay. Uh, and as far uh, go, so going back to some more trades, anything else uh, that because there were some defensive yeah, think, trades. Yeah. But... Yep. I mean, I think Hawkinson was the surprising one going from Detroit. He was not mentioned at all as, as no, a potential. But that's a good trade. one candidate yeah i mean he's going from an offense that he's going to an offense that's going to throw up more which helps um, now he's got to compete for targets with justin jefferson and, and adam Thielen. um so i think it's probably about a wash for hawkinson this season uh you know long term it might be a win just going to a more uh you know adept franchise i think in minnesota um and then you know talking dynasty calvin ridley going to jacksonville you know no impact this season he's obviously suspended the rest of the year um but that's interesting that that makes me Excited for Trevor Lawrence to, you know, have who, who's been <laughs> up and down this season. But, you know, to have 
Kelvin Ridley now a true number one. Christian Kirk can kind of be number two, which I think is what he should be. Um, I think, you know, th- there's a chance for Lawrence. They're at least surrounding him with weapons. He's He's got – I think he has next season, and that's it. He has Probably. got yep. to do something next season because he'll be in year two of Peterson. Like you said, he's going to have more weapons than he's ever had before. There will be no more excuses. And he's got to make some moves. Um, he still has this half a season to, to start that, mm-hmm. but I don't know if that's going to happen the way they're playing it's, and the way he's looking. Um, and uh, has anyone else kind of caught your eye that's been a surprise for you so far? Brees was a surprise, but anybody else that's been a surprise that you were like, yeah, I didn't really expect to see this coming. How about Dante Foreman last week? Yeah, right. <laughs> He looked he he looked like a mini Derrick Henry out there. What a what a gift if he had Dante Foreman uh, just you know yeah. hanging out as their insurance policy in yeah. case McCaffrey gets hurt and then he gets traded. Yeah, and I remember telling people like, oh, if McCaffrey goes down or gets traded, there's go- there's going to be no fantasy value in that backfield because the offense is so bad. But you know, Foreman's obviously proved that wrong. The offense is playing a bit better with PJ Walker under center now. With with Foreman, you're you're going to get Chuba Hubbard back this week. It yeah. looks like so Foreman's not going to get all the work. But again, he, he played so well last week, but I, I think he's going to remain the, the lead guy in that backfield and probably someone you can still at least start in fantasy. Uh, he looked incredibly well in that short period of time, replacing Derrick Henry. And yeah. I think most people just felt, yeah, but that was Tennessee and that was a short, you know, just a sample size. But all of a sudden. Well, he, it, and, he, and he blew out his Achilles, too. That's usually a, you know, that usually ends running backs' careers. And he's obviously bounced back and looks just as good, if not better. And and speaking of Derrick Henry, yeah, we, we if if you picked them, where, where did he go on average? Man, in some of the leagues I do that are you know full PPR, he was dropping into the second round. Sometimes. That's crazy. They're going in the late first, you know, at, at the earliest. Um, wow, yeah. that's nuts. Yeah, that didn't happen in my league. I mean, in my league, usually everybody takes running backs, like they right. gobble them all up like incredibly, and. uh which is why I my first two picks were Chase and and uh, and Allen, because I, I didn't have any of those star running backs were all gone, and I had a I had to think outside the box and go all right well if you're gonna do that I'll take the top wide receiver and the top quarterback you know uh, on the way back so uh, now Henry Henry obviously looks awesome to me the bigger takeaway from that game was start all your running backs against the Texans that's a that's a pathetic run defense they okay. get the Eagles they get the Eagles tonight so I think Miles Sanders is, is going to have a big game tonight and just going forward start your running backs against the Texans would you would you say though the pick up because they're available I would think Gainwell and Boston Scott are available no? yeah they too are. much I, I mean you're if you need it, on, if you need you're it. banking on garbage you're banking on garbage time which will probably be there it's it's kind of a flimsy play but again there, so there are six teams on by this week. You know, fantasy teams are going to struggle to put together starting lineups. So there might be some cases where Boston yeah. Scott. I mean, I'm just looking at our rankings right now. We have Boston Scott RB 49. So you know, I mean, there's there's probably better guys you can pick up. But again, sure. he, if he gets if he gets eight carries in the fourth quarter because they're up by three touchdowns, he, he's going to put together a decent fantasy line. Yeah, and I was ho- I, with Khalil Herbert on my team. I was hoping for a David Montgomery trade that never came. Uh, and, and I think there were a lot of people that were hoping if they had Brandon Cooks that there was going to be a oh. Brandon I don't, You know, I had so, the contract just killed him. All right. So Cooks is not expected to play tonight. I don't know. I don't know where it's going to go going forward, but um, he he's he's pissed. He's he's not going to play against the Eagles tonight. So get him out of your fantasy lineups. Yeah, I wonder. Well, I wonder what happens. Uh, it's a good good point. I wonder what happens if uh, they caught him contractually. That might. Uh, yeah. You know, that might actually be better off for everybody involved. But, you know, you don't feel sorry for Brandon Cooks and his, what, $14 million salary this year? Yeah, I he's, mean, he's come gonna on. Be fine. Yeah, he's going to be okay. Uh, before I let you go, you just mentioned Cooks and you mentioned the game tonight. Any other kind of tidbits for this weekend? Anything that might be interesting to note regarding starting players or especially with all the buys you mentioned? Yeah, I think the Chargers are – one of the more interesting teams this week. They have this matchup against Atlanta, um, who just gave up a big game to, to Dante Foreman and PJ Walker and DJ Moore. That's another really bad defense. So you want to be starting Chargers this week. Mike Williams is not going to play. Keenan Allen looks like he's going to be out again with what? his hand. Keenan said his hamstring. Both going to be right. out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mike Williams has a high ankle sprain. He's going to miss a few games. Keenan wow. Allen's hamstring got worse over the bye week. He said, so he's probably going to so, sit. So, so, so should we all be picking up Josh Palmer? 
Josh Palmer, I think, is like a top 25 wide receiver really? play this week. I think uh, Gerald Everett is a really strong tight end play. I think he's going to get a bunch of targets. Even in, deeper Josh leagues, Palmer. even in deeper leagues, uh, DeAndre Carter is going to be the Chargers' number two wide receiver. I think he's even wor- he- worth a look in your you know leagues of 12-plus teams. Okay. And, and anything else? Or is that like the main one? That was just the main one I had. Okay. Yeah. Uh, all right. So then let's see. I have, again, because I have the injuries that I mentioned. So I have Marquise Brown out. And chase out. So I have uh, in my lineup. I have Dylan. Uh, I, I decided, you know what? I got to put Killer Herbert in my lineup now. I don't want to, but I have to. And it's not a bad idea the way that he's been playing in, in his halftime touches. Uh, I have uh, Edward Hilaire in the backfield, and I don't know. Did I mention Dylan? Yep. Okay, so Dylan, Edward Hilaire, Herbert, and I got to think of someone else. And the two receivers I have are. Um, who do I have? Uh, my two wide receivers. Oh, DJ Moore, who finally started to play. Right. And um, who is my other receiver? Oh, and I picked up Rondell Moore. Okay. But there's one more guy. And uh, the question I'm asking, or I wanted to ask is, what do you think about those players compared to picking up Josh Palmer? Because as you can see, I have some... You know, uh, I've got at least some minor issues. The other running back. Oh, what? Of course, the other running back is only my best one, Kenneth Walker. Nice. So, so yeah. yeah so I, uh, Dylan Edwards, Hilaire, Herbert Walker, more and more. Would I start Palmer over any of those guys? Would it be Dylan? I like Palmer over. Um, I, I like him over Clyde. I like him over Clyde Edwards, Hilaire. He's just. Uh, I know. I know that feeling, but he just. You know, he's only not produced like twice. I think. Yeah, it, it's been it's been fluky though. He's just been scoring touchdowns. Just twice. I know it has been, yeah. but he's only not produced twice. Everything he was, else he is was, almost uh, double he was, digits. He was third among their running backs in snaps last game, behind McKinnon and Pacheco. Um, I, yeah, I'd, I'd rather. And, and Tennessee's run defense is good. Yeah, they are. Uh, they're, yeah. they're beatable in the in the air. And, and Everett's Lair can do some damage in the passing. But I, I wouldn't. Who else? I, I, who, who would be I'd next? Rather start, I'd rather. Um, I'd start Palmer over Rondale more too. Um, you would. Yeah, I don't. I know Moore had the big game last. You don't year. think don't, it's hopefully. a start of something? No. I, I think it'll be. I think it'll be okay. Seattle's defense has been a lot better lately. Pass defense, yeah, and, and, and defense in general, and their pass they defense have as well. Yes, um, and, and DeAndre Hopkins just dominating targets there now. And um, that's a so good thing. Not, and yeah, and yeah, I was hoping to see offense. how that would help Marquise Brown, but unfortunately, I got to wait a couple more weeks at least. Yeah, I think Randall Moore is okay, but I, I prefer Josh Palmer if you can get him. And uh, uh, not that I'm going to start him, but do you believe in uh, uh, the ascension of Paris Campbell? Maybe it would have been better if Matt Ryan was still there because he should have had a touchdown in the game last week. But there was a penalty that turned into a one yard kind of deal or it should have been a 20 yard touchdown to Paris Campbell. Yeah. And he would have had three really good weeks in a row. Yeah, I'm not I'm not really buying Campbell. Um, They were going pass heavy with Matt Ryan and they went run heavy with Ellinger last yeah. week. I kind of think that's going to remain the case. Although maybe if Jonathan Taylor's ankle injury um, continues to nag him, they might have to throw it a bit more. But um, any other big injuries that you just kind of threw in there, anything else that we need to keep an eye on? Uh, I think that'll just about, those are the big it. ones. I mean, yeah. Those are the big ones. Yeah. Okay. All right, Jared. So next week we're going to do something interesting. Cause I think the first time we, we spoke uh, you have like 50 leagues. So I actually had to pick out one league and then I had, of course, yeah. my one league, and we looked at our, our rosters, what they looked like at the beginning of the season. So now mm-hmm. we're going to take a look at them next week, and we're going to see all the differences with injuries and waiver wire pickups and or trades and things like that and how our teams have changed and what our record are what our records are in those leagues. So uh, we'll do that next week since you were off a couple of weeks. So you're going to be back again next week. We'll talk to Matt in a couple of weeks. Uh, so appreciate it. What, what you're doing? You still got, what, two shows a week with Matt? Yeah, we just did our preview show, so it'll be up okay. on the Draft Sharks. Be, that's where we go through every single game in detail, talking about basically any player you want to know about. Um, and then we do our DFS shows every Friday. DraftKings, FanDuel, if you play on those sites, we have uh, shows specifically for you know players you should be targeting on those sites. Awesome. All right. Well, Jared, appreciate it.